hello everybody welcome back to the channel this is going to be my reading wrap up for the month of may how many did i read two four Three books in May not all of them are very long uh, there are some short ones in here so let's just uh, get going so the first book I read in May was the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman obviously this is a children's book um, about nobody Owens whose parents are murdered and somebody's trying to kill him as well he escapes and ends up in the local cemetery where the ghosts take him in and look after him and bring him up all the while trying to keep him safe from this person Jack that is trying to kill him I enjoyed this book it was really good um, I'll keep it for Jennifer when she's older I think I'll just put it on one of my random shelves I, I did give it three stars because obviously it's a children's book it's, it's not going to be gripping enough for me but I did enjoy it um, yeah Neil Gaiman he's a great writer I do love Neil Gaiman so that was the first one uh, the second one was an ebook I had from NetGalley which is called A Wartime Secret Unfortunately, my uh, tablet is uh, dead because Jennifer keeps using it. Um, and this tells the story of a young girl who, uh, whose mother's German um, and she has a sister and they live in London during the Blitz. Her mother's arrested because she's German and shipped off to a camp somewhere in Wales, I want to say. It's something like Anglesey, somewhere like that. And her sister is evacuated into the countryside. She herself takes a job working at a bank and when the bank is evacuated to the countryside with its owner, she goes with them. She discovers that there is a, a small child that speaks German there. He is a relative of the bank's owner and they're trying to keep it a secret. The bank's owner learns that she has, uh, is a, um, a German speaker and because he wants to learn how to speak German in case the Germans do invade she starts teaching him how to uh, speak the language. What happens then is eventually she ends up tracking down her mum, her mum is fine and her sister's fine on a farm and she goes off to help in the war effort as a translator because of her language skills. It was a really good book. Again I gave it three three out of five. I, I mean if I'd have read it all in one sitting I probably would have given it more. It's definitely worth reading. Um, next is uh, H.P. Bain, Mr. Grin, which is a Braddock and Gray case file. There's the cover, let's just let it focus. Um, this is again uh, Des Braddock and Sullivan Gray. Sullivan Gray can see ghosts um, that have been murdered. Mr. Grin is the name of a famous ventriloquist's dummy. The ventriloquist was killed and there's a ghost haunting the dummy and basically terrifying people. Can they find out who it is that's in the dummy? Can they stop it from killing people? Because it does, it's quite a creepy one. It's one of the creepiest ones I've read actually, but I really, really did enjoy it. So what was next? Uh, what did I give it? I gave that one five because I just love those stories. Just excuse me while I'm just checking my that's fine. After that I read the next Enzo McLeod story which is by Peter May. This one is called The Critic. This is about a wine critic who is, excuse me, pickled basically in a barrel of wine and then strung up like a scarecrow. So McLeod goes to investigate it. Um, to do that he's got to unravel this wine critic, his name's Petty's Mysterious Reviews and I guess shorthand that he uses while he's doing it. It's a really good story. I'm, I'm really enjoying these Enzo McLeod ones. They're really good. Again, it got a four stars. Um, these can be quite horrible. The, the way the murders in these is, is actually quite, quite nasty. It's not nice, not nice at all. Then we read The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This was the book that John Lennon's killer was carrying when he killed him. When he was, yeah. What do you say about it? It's about a boy, 17, Holden Caulfield, who goes to a, a way to school. He's expelled. <coughs> but he's allowed to stay till the end of term. Instead of waiting to the end of term, he leaves a few days before. Goes off into New York, which is where he lives. Basically bums around spending his money annoying people. One of those tortured teenager things, you assume he got his life together afterwards, but you never know. 
it was an okay book I guess he is a no man I gave it three stars so it, it was all right but it's, it's just a bit odd odd <laughs> is, is that what I say odd do I want to say odd yeah ah, Stephen King Salem's Lot Stephen King and vampires what can I say about it yes a writer returns to Salem's Lot right Ben Mears he, he grew up there he's been terrified by this particular house for years because uh, this this one house he went into a person who killed themselves there and he swears he still sees him hanging there even though he wasn't this house is taken over by a nest of vampires and basically people start disappearing they turn into vampires and ben and his friends are trying to destroy the the head vampire and stop you know stop the vampires basically it's you it's, it's great it is really good i really really love this book <sighs> You've got to love a bit of Stephen King and vampires. You know, who else could do it any better, really? You know? Aha! Now, Peter James, The Secret of Cold Hill. So this is a sequel to The House on Cold Hill, which was a haunted house story. Um, Peter James is most famous known for his Roy Grace series. However, he also writes sort of supernatural and weird books which I really like in fact I discovered the supernatural ones first with a book called Prophecy so the secrets of Cold Hill Cold Hill Mansion Cold Hill House has been demolished and is now being turned into a housing estate the th problem with Cold Hill House is nobody over the age of 40 ever leaves they all die there so this um, artist and his wife move into the biggest house on, on the, the um, estate which is modelled after the original Cold House and they start seeing ghosts. Opposite them live another couple and they also start seeing weird things. Um, so basically he's trying to convince himself that, that first of all there's nothing going on and then they start seeing this, this figure. Uh, some of them aren't really nasty, some of them are quite nice, um, but all of them will say you will never leave Cold House. So this tells the story of this writer and his, his wife and their neighbours and what happens to them. This is more creepy than the original House on Cold Hill, I would say. It's creepy from the get-go. Obviously with the first book he was building the scenario of Cold House, um, but this one is, you don't need to read the first one to read this one. It might help, but you don't need to. I might read them back to back at some point just to have a go. But this was creepy from page one right to the end. I really, really enjoyed it and gave it four stars. Hooray! Now, the next one was an ebook. So excuse me while I look it up on my phone. Won't take me a long time. That's not going to work. Oh, my eyes. It's not. Doesn't want to find it. Normally, I'd, I'd do this. I, you know, but hey, let's see if I can get the picture up quickly. So the set next book was Force of Time by Adrian Cousins, and this is the third book in the Jason Apsley series. Now, Eye of Time is set in the same town, pretty much, but um, features different people. Although they do sort of cross over a little bit, and you learn a bit about them. So in this one, it is now the 1980s. Is it 80s? Yeah, 1980, 1987. Excuse me. Life has gone on fine for Jason and his family. He thinks he's safe from all the people that um, were threatening him, the colonies. However, two faces come back from the dead. His friend or colleague, Martin, suddenly turns up. Which means if Martin, who was killed in the last book, has turned up, then so has Paul Colney. The bad guy. On top of that Shirley Colney, his mother, is also back on the scene. She's coming back from Spain to see what's going on. She wants her grandchildren which are the two children that Jason and his wife adopted in the previous book. So now they're dealing with Shirley Colney, Paul Colney back from the dead, Martin's back from the dead. It's all very very confusing but still a really really good book. Very nostalgic with all the 80s music coming in and, and, and all that stuff. There is apparently going to be another one. I'm very excited because I really enjoy these books. They're so nostalgic. Um, but yeah I gave that one a four stars as well. 
Uh, the next book I read was a non-fiction one and this is Witchfinders, 17th century English tragedy, tragedy by Malcolm Gaskill. This basically tells the story of Matthew Hopkins and the witch trials of the 17th century, basically. Um, it's very hard going, it is very very dense. There are bits that are very fascinating, it's fascinating in places but it's just too, it's just too dense in it. It's hard to explain. Um, I previously read Delusion of Satan, which is about the Salem witch trials, and that is much easier to read. It's not as dry, it's not as academic, I want to say. It, it, you know, this could have been so much better. I only gave it two stars. Oh, right, where's that one? Buried Alive, J. Curley. This was good. This one was a good one. So, uh, Carson Ryder takes a vacation after seeing a violent um, psychopath escape from prison. Uh, but his vacation is interrupted when he gets an anonymous phone call alerting him to the fact that there's been a grisly murder. So he and a detective named Donna sift through the uh, bizarre clues to try and find out who it is. And Carson's clinically insane brother, Jeremy, is also there. Um, he is uh, on the run too, and he turns up. He's not the killer, by the way. It'd be too easy if it was. This was a really good one. I gave it four stars. It was gripping from the beginning to the end. I really enjoyed it. The next one, again, is another ebook. <sighs> I'll be more prepared next month and make sure I've got my thing charged up. This one was called, oops, excuse me, that's just the door going, The Ghost of, what's that, Marlowe House. So this was The Ghost of Marlowe House, if I can find it, written by Bobby Holmes. It's the first book in a series. I only got the first book because it is a, um, it was Kindle Unlimited. It was good though. So there's the, the uh, I've got to remember what it's about now. It's been that long since I read it. It doesn't want to focus on the cover. Uh, that'd be better, be better. Anyway, yeah, The Ghost of Marlowe House. So Danielle is a young lady. She inherits a Marlowe house from a relative. Um, when she goes there, she finds that the previous owner who died there is still there, a ghost waiting for his wife. However, what he doesn't know is that his wife wasn't exactly faithful. There's also something hidden in the house. Um, so we've got people looking for this a necklace that went missing many years ago and the Mr Marlowe allegedly took from this woman he was in love with who was an actress and um, so they're looking for that and then you've got the mystery of what happened to uh, Marlowe and his wife. I think her name was Angela. Um, because Angela went away for a bit and she died away in an accident and he allegedly killed himself in the house but obviously he didn't so it was a bit of a mystery I really enjoyed it gave it four stars it was a lot of fun also sad but it was really really good then I read The Vinyl Detective which is uh, Andrew Cartmel's sixth instalment in the series where the eponymous Vinyl Detective we never know what his name is and his girlfriend Nevada travel to Sweden to listen to a metal, a death or well, demonic metal uh, record to verify that it is in perfect condition and is what it says on the tin. However, bodies start turning up killed in the manner of the titles of the songs, which is quite interesting. <coughs> uh, excuse me. So again, great, lovely book from Andrew Cartmel. I love it. The rec the references to vinyl and various sound systems and tracking down records and Nevada and a vintage clothing. This is one of my favourite book series. Is. I hope there's going to be more, but uh, we'll have to see. You know, I did enjoy it. So I gave that one five stars. What's next? The Ripper Reports. Okay, so uh, one of the Jack the Ripper books I've got uh, in my never ending TBR that just seems to keep on growing. It's the TBR that keeps on giving. No matter how many I read, they just more appear. More appear, I swear. Uh, yeah, The Ripper Reports by T.M. Thorne. It literally is what it says on the tin. This is a selection of newspaper articles reprinted in book form 
from 1888 and early 1889 I think and the articles are as wide as obviously you get them from London, Bristol, the West Country, Scotland, America, France, all over, uh, all over the world, Australia and they're all in here so at times yes it's very very repetitive it's not like reading a chronological event book on the ripper where you're just reading in order what was said you're reading articles from various papers that repeat the same information so yeah it is very repetitive but it is fascinating i would like to see a book on ripper reports from the years after the murders um bringing it into legend that would be interesting i would love that so you know a book of ripper reports from say 1890 to 1950 and then 1950 to present day or something along those lines that would be really cool but yeah I gave it five stars because the information in here is is from the time so it is contemporary information that was available at the time and some of it's wrong and you read it and you think well we know now that that's wrong but that's what makes it interesting that this is what they thought they knew at the time there we go and after that one we read The Princeling by Cynthia Harold Eagles. This is book three in the Dynasty series that follows the family of the Catholic Morelands. So Elizabeth I is on the throne which is obviously dangerous for Morelands big family because they are Cath Catholics. Um, basically it's there's a lot going on in this book because you've got Nanette who was in the, the last book who's now older looking after the um one of the Moreland heirs who is a illegitimate child because he was a product of a rape then you've got uh John who's the main heir to Moreland Place who rides up to north to Scotland to wed Black Will Percy's um daughter Mary Percy and he stays up there and then Letitia's sister marries uh, a Scottish Baron Robert Hamilton who she does fall in love with um, they're up in the court of Mary Queen of Scots and so on and there's a lot going on in this book but it is so well written and it's so enjoyable that I'm looking forward to reading the next one I, I, I don't know when because I've got so many books and they're all mixed up on the top of the shelf so I've got to sort them out I need some space so yeah, it is the, the the books are moving up there slowly. I have pulled a few down, but that's that one, and I gave that one. I gave it three because it, there was a lot going on, but it was still a good read. To me, one is terrible, two is okay, three is good, four is excellent, and five stars is exceptional. So just so you know. So another three star read was this uh, book of short stories called *The Act* by. David M. V. Spiller. So these are various short stories. Um, some inspired by real life, some not. You've got one called Murder in the Vicarage, based upon a m brutal murder of a local priest. Um, a teenage boy's anxiety about going on retreat to do with, with religion and confirmation. Uh, romance ones, uh, in the first flushes of romance. There are some really nice stories in this book. And of course, because it's short stories, you don't have to sit and read it all in one go. You can read one or two and then just put it down, go away and come back and read uh, read another one when you feel like it. And that's exactly what I did. I would read one of these stories. I think well, I, that's enough of that for now. I'm going to read another book. Uh, and that's how I did it. Uh, another book that's taken me a long time to finish because it's that bad is Goddess and Secret Lives of Marilyn Monroe Updated Edition by Anthony Summers. When I say updated edition, there's hardly anything updated in here. He still quotes the same old, same old people who have been debunked years and years and years ago. Uh, we're talking Robert Slater and Jeannie Carmen. Just because Jeannie Carmen lived in the same apartment complex does not mean to say they were friends. At all. He still quotes Whitey Snyder, Marion's makeup artist, as saying, yes, her and Bob knew each other well, whereas Whitey later recanted that statement and said, actually, I just took it on Bob's word that they knew each other. I've never met him. Um, so the first book where you're talking about Marilyn in her youth and becoming a star is interesting when it gets onto the Kennedys it's boring and dull because again whether you believe the Kennedys or not a lot of that has been debunked in recent years she met Jack Kennedy four times once they were potentially that once they had the chance to actually be alone together and could have had sex we know that that's not in, in dispute. She did not go to the Carlisle Hotel the night of the Kennedy um, ball, happy birthday ball, because 
she went to Arthur Crim's house afterwards uh, and there are photographs of her there uh, watching uh, Maria Callis I think um, she's nowhere near Kennedy he's over at the back she's leaning on a banister um, and we know that she arrived back at her apartment at 4am which would be about right after dropping Arthur Miller's father home who was her date for the evening so it's just why 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 keep this nonsense going it says updated and then it's got the Netflix label on it because of the documentary which if you want to know what I think about that nip over to my TikTok Marilyn and me um, and you'll find all sorts of Monroe related goodies over there then I read another non-fiction book which was James Patterson with Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge The Last Days of John Lennon The Assassination That Changed a Generation this is a bit of a misnomer because it's not just about John Lennon there is a whole history of the Beatles in here which is actually very interesting it is very sad um, it tells you a lot about Chapman and, and his fixation on uh, Lennon and why he wanted to kill him and, and all that stuff but it is very sad at the end of it where he's coming home from the hit factory where he's been mixing a song for Yoko Ono and he says I just want to go home and kiss Sean goodnight and of course he never got to because he was murdered and to me that is the the most saddest part of it it's just that that sense of normality I just want to go home and kiss my son goodnight and he couldn't it also says about how he reconciled with Julian and, and things like that it's an interesting book it's a good book definitely worth picking up I enjoyed it as much as you can enjoy a book about somebody you uh, admire being murdered all right where's the next one here it is Blood and Bone by Valentina Giambanco okay so let's just have a quick remind mind of it because it's been that long I've got to be honest, I gave this one, oh what did I give, I gave four stars to James Patson. this one I gave three stars, right now I remember it sort of, Alice Madison is chasing down a serial killer who has been framing innocent people for years, um, the widow of one of the victims has been stalked so Madison is going to track them down it's terrible that I don't actually remember much about it Jerry Lindquist yeah I remember Jerry Lindquist that's the problem sometimes when you read so much you do tend to forget it I'll admit I, I'm probably gonna have to read this one again campsite Anyway, I, I, I gave it three stars, which might be why I don't really remember it very well. Goddess, I gave one star, by the way. Talking of one stars, there's a big pile of books on here now. Hopefully I remember next month's books better and I've read a lot more already. Well, I'm almost on 20. I did read this, The Other Side of Marilyn Monroe. So basically this is a journalist and a psychic medium who contact Marilyn Monroe from the other side basically um it's a bit weird because not only that you get john lennon jumping in and judy garland and joe dimaggio they have a concert don't ask me um doesn't really say anything about it does go into her death and i can't even remember what it said the day marilyn was killed There was somebody there wasn't that she was killed. It was wasn't John, it was people who wanted him to be re-elected. It's it's really bizarre and a load of nonsense basically. As to Yeah. You guess there's and you think, really? I've read so much stuff like this in the past that I'm like, what on earth are you on about? Jenny Hogan, do you remember the first time? I don't even remember the last time. So her friend's getting married. Yeah, I do remember this one. I enjoyed this one. Um, and when she cuts the cake, the wedding cake with her fiance, Flora wishes she could be turn back the clock and be something like 16 again. And the next moment when she wakes up 
and she's 16 and she's in her old bedroom but it's still the same year and it's a few weeks before the wedding so she gets to relive her teenage years um the boy who broke her heart she has a new best friend it was just really really heartwarming that if you went back and, and did it again would it be any better would you do anything differently it does have a different outcome for and it is really really good i really enjoyed this one and gave it four stars so jenny colgan do you remember the first time it's really good i really like it one more the last book i read was joe nesbo's cockroaches so this is a harry hole thriller harry goes to bangkok in thailand because the norwegian ambassador has been found dead murdered and harry's there to investigate but there's a lot more to it than what's going on so there's uh incriminating cctv footage tape people go missing um his the, the the ambassador's daughter is involved in some sort of way and oh it's so it's very good i gave it four stars um let's just see what i put good writing it's a bit long yes it is a bit long it could have been a bit shorter there's a lot of the driving down dark lanes and avoiding people in bangkok and obviously the sex stuff that goes on and, and brothels and things that they're not supposed to have there but they do but yeah it was a good read I, if you pick it up i wouldn't say rush out and buy it but if you find it pick it up it's a good read there's nothing wrong with it so those are the 23 books i read in may now in june already i have actually read 19 because i've been ill but i am doing reviews on them on my tiktok if you want to go and have a quick look just very quick ones i've only done four of the 19 so far um and that is andrea life one two three if you go over for that one and marilyn is marilyn and me so yeah I've, i'm just giving a brief overview of the books over on tiktok uh so if you want to go and see what i've read so much some of what i've read this month please do it's all over there hope you've enjoyed uh hearing what i think about these books that i've read in may and hopefully well june's won't wrap up won't be as late at least i hope not but i'll let you know i'll see you soon bye guys